Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning, everyone. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure for me being here. Um, actually, I was asked to talk about the glaciers of the third pole. So I will focus on the Karakorum, but I will basically tackle the entire high mountain Asia. I hope you don't mind. Um, is there any mouse? Because when I, when I use a pointer, probably those uh, from outside can't. OK, right. Right, so I'm, I'm Tobias Walsh. I'm now, I used to be in Zurich, not too far away from here. Um, but now, since two and a half years, I'm working at the University of St. Andrews. And I want to thank also my group members. So what I present today is a summary of what we have been doing, but also results of research from others. Yeah, so, right. I, I want to first show you um, kind of a summary about the importance and vulnerability of the world's water towers. So what we did, so as an international consortium, we ranked the water towers according to water availability, glacier, glacier um, importance, and also importance of the cryosphere for the population. And what you see is that basically in High Mountain Asia, they are the most important water towers on Earth. But when, when you, oops, now, now I need to have the other one. When you look at the vulnerability, where we looked at other criteria like um, climate change, hydropower potential conflicts, but also the stability of the government, you see again that in High Mountain Asia, they are the most vulnerable, vulnerable water towers existing. So it's a key area for research, but also a key area where the mountains are of high importance. I will skip some slides, but want to highlight that also in this region, you have to be careful about not summing up everything, but that there are parts in Western High Mountain Asia where you have precipitation mainly during winter, where the glacier melt is of really very high importance, while in the Eastern part, which is more monsoon dominated, glaciers are a reliable source of water, but they are not as important as in those regions where we have almost no precipitation during summer. So what do we know right now about the glaciers? I heard in the speech, or you all heard in the speech this morning, that in 2013, there was a summary and we should present the progress. And the progress was really enormous. We know now through a generation of a glacier inventory, we know where all the glaciers are, but we specifically know now about the volume and mass changes almost each glacier in the Himalaya, now even of each glacier in the world, which is really amazing. So let me briefly summarize what, what we know. So we have this so-called Karakor anomaly, where the glaciers have been in balance for several decades. But the anomaly is mainly centered along around Western Kundu, so in the northeast, northwestern Tibetan plateau. And in the outer parts of High Mountain Asia, we have the regions with the highest mass loss. We also wanted to know about what was the glacier change before 2000. So these studies started 2000. So we used some declassified data. And what you see in each region along the Himalayan arc, there was a clear increase in mass loss since 2000. And what we also did in this study, we looked at glaciers terminating into lakes. You know, you may understand when glaciers retreat, there, there's a lake which can form in front of the glacier, behind of the uh, moraine. So these glaciers are, they are accelerating glacier melt. And as the, these lakes are increasing, the lakes are increasing both in number and in size, they further increase the glacier melt, which we can show, could show in this study. And I want to briefly also focus on one region of the Everest K2 region, where this is a focus. We use the, all available satellite imagery starting from 1962, but also aerial images to study the glacier changes in the Everest region. And what you see that, so the red color means surface lowering, that the red color increased and that there's between 1962 and 2018, almost all glaciers lowered significantly. And when you look at the average, there was an 
clear increase of mass loss and a continuous increase of mass loss since 1962. When I now want to summarize the knowledge, not only one study, but all existing studies in high mountain Asia, I can once again confirm what I told that there is a, a region centered around Western Kunlun, but also in Karakorum, where the glaciers have been in balance since the 1970s. And in the outer parts of high mountain Asia, we had an accelerating mass loss. What are now the projections for the future? I don't want to go into the details, but what you can see very clearly that all studies agree that there is an increasing trend in mass loss, while in South Asia West, where the Karakorum is located, the in increase in mass loss is slightly, or is projected to be slightly lower than in the other parts of high mountain Asia. When I go now more into details, um, representing two studies which look the future, at the future evolution of the glaciers in different parts. You see that the outer parts in northwestern Tian Shan, where we have relatively small and low lying glaciers, an almost deglaciation is projected until, until the end of the century. And the regions where we have large glaciers, where, for example, Karakorum is located, uh, where is the Karakorum? Yeah, the Kunlun Shan and Karakorum, there's also a clear mass loss, but it's less, than the, the projection said that about 40, around 40% 40 of the glaciers might be um, lost until the end of the century. Let me go into the details of the Karakorum anomaly. It was first presented by Ken Hewitt in 2005, where he wrote in the late 1990s, widespread evidence of glacial expansion was found in the central Karakorum, in contrast to the worldwide decline of mountain glaciers. Exceptional numbers of glacier surges were also reported. And he presented a map of um, glaciers which have been thickening and surging. This can be nicely shown when you, when you look at the different regions of the Himalaya and compare the clear retreat of all glaciers in the Himalaya, the glaciers in the Karakorum, they showed non-linear behavior, so they advanced and retreated, so clear surge type behavior. And overall, this was confirmed by a study published in 2012 by Julie Gardell that the glaciers have been in balance since 2000. What I want to point out that the sign, so I did a study where I confirmed that the glaciers in the central Karakorum and Hunza Basin have been in balance since around the 1970s. Well, so the problem, so I didn't go into details, but this was basically a study summarizing the knowledge um, after this um, IPCC error that um, the Himalayan glaciers will disappear um, or many glaciers will disappear at 2035. So what we gathered all the um, available information and here I selected um, representative glaciers to show the behavior in the different regions. And so there are, were not too many information available about length changes. So that's based on, on literature, for example, some of them were taken from Ken Hewitt's publication uh, published in 2010 or 11. You're welcome. What, what do we know now? The question was, is there still a Karakaran anomaly? This year, a publication was published um, about all glaciers on the globe, almost all glaciers on the globe, using satellite data. And they divided it into five periods after the year 2000. And what you see, relatively good, that the blue color means positive masculines, the red color means negative masculines. And when I now look at the different periods, you see that the blue color is gradually disappearing. And it seems like we have here the central Karakorum, the glaciers are also now losing mass. 
So it hints to the fact that the current form anomaly comes to an end. There's another study which was published using um, laser altimetry data. So it's not as precise. And when you look here and look at the Karakorum, there is no clear trend. There might be even a slight thickening in the Western Kuni. So this study doesn't really confirm the Karakorum anomaly, but there are also some problems with the sensor in general with this methodology. But so at least it's not clear. What we did in another study used all available satellite information for seven selected regions amongst one region, which is the Eastern Pamir, where we had also this um, situation that the glaciers have been in balance since um, the 1970s. So you see it here, the red color means mass loss and the grayish and specifically blue color means mass gain. And what we found that in this region, also the mass loss now prevails. So we can basically also confirm the other study that we have now a situation that almost all regions, glaciers, uh, the glaciers are losing mass. And this region is also known for glacier surges, what you see here. So this is very similar to the situation in the Karakorum. We also wanted to know the drivers and compared the mass loss with temperature and presentation. And what we found that specifically since 2010, the, the temperature increase specifically in summer is the driver of the mass loss, while beforehand it was um, both precipitation and temperature driving the mass loss and heterogeneity. The temperature has now become most important, which means I cannot fully confirm that the Karakorum anomaly is over, but there are clear evidence that mass loss now has prevails. This is now my last important slide where I want to highlight also what Ken Hewitt said, that there are lots of glacier surges in the Karakorum. And we recently compiled, actually this paper was submitted yesterday, um, that there are, it's an inventory of surging glaciers, so those glaciers which, which are advancing rapidly, not uh, due to climate, but due to some internal instability. And this shows that also after 2000, also nowadays, there's a clear concentration of surging glaciers in the Karakorum and Western Kundun. So in this, in this sense, the Karakorum anomaly is still there, but it is different. And we really need to understand why um, the glaciers are behaving in a different way and what drives the Karakorum anomaly and what, how it will be in the future. Can you just go to the next slide? So what this means for the future is basically that if the glaciers are losing mass in the beginning, there's an increasing water availability, but when they continue to shrink, the water availability to the runoff from the glaciers will clearly decline. And in all regions in high mountain Asia, this so-called peak water is projected to be around 2000. 30 to 2050, maybe slightly later in the Indus Basin where the Karakorum is located. But this information is most important for the policy makers to be able to um, plan water use and water availability. So I want to conclude that glacier mass loss increased in almost all regions in high mountain Asia. The highest mass loss can, can be found in the northwestern and southeastern regions. Mass loss now prevails even in those regions like the Karakorum, where um, the glaciers were in balance until recently, which hints to the end of the Karakorum anomaly. All projections agree that glaciers in all regions of high mountain Asia will continue to lose mass with the possibility of almost deglaciation in the outer ranges. The main driver for the increased mass loss is the increasing summer temperature, but there are many other factors, precipitation, topography, surging, debris cover, glacial lakes, which I can could only briefly touch upon, which are really important to understand and to be investigated to reduce the uncertainty and to provide reliable numbers 
for the stakeholders and policy makers for planning um, the future. And with this figure of um, Hunza Basin, which depends on the water provided on the mountains, all those green areas are only possible due to irrigation. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Mille grazie. Thank you.